So picture this scenario. You're out one night, maybe you're just having a good time, relaxing, and some dude tries to start some trouble with you. Now you might try to de-escalate it, but before you realize it, he's got four of his friends surrounding you. What do you do? Well, today we're gonna to talk some ideas about how to handle self-defense against multiple attackers. Now this was a question asked to us by one of our viewers, Kevin Parham. And the question was, what is a good martial art for a mass attack? Now, we're not gonna go so much into detail about any specific techniques, but more along the lines of, we're gonna address a lot of considerations that people need to understand about multiple attackers. So let's go back to that first scenario. You find yourself surrounded. What's the first thing that you should do? Well, okay, if, it's, if you sense it's starting to escalate and you think trouble's coming, Try to talk your way out of it as possible, you know. Don't be big, don't be all tough, don't insult or talk back. That's only gonna escalate the situation. Do whatever you can to calm it down because you do not want it to erupt into something worse than that. Now the second thing you should do is really actually the first thing you should be doing to begin with, and that is work on your positioning. So while you're trying to talk them down and de-escalate the situation, work on trying to maneuver your way out of a harmful situation, maybe look for an exit and try to get to a position where you're not cornered or surrounded. Positioning, I think, is one of the most important factors when it comes to defending yourself against multiple people. The last place you wanna be is in the center of a circle of aggression. Because once you're in there, it is very difficult to get out of it. And while you're working on positioning, ideally, and of course, this is, there's nothing ideal about the situation at all, but you wanna to try to line them up as much as you can. Try to keep them in the way of each other. So if there's five people, try to move in a way that maybe two or three can block one or two of the other ones. Because again, you don't wanna be in the middle, you wanna kind of align it to your favor as best as you possibly can. Keep them in between you and the others. Also, keep them in your sights. Don't ignore the guy behind you because you're trying to line these guys up. You always want to see what they're doing because you, you do not know what's going to come at you at the blind side. And I guarantee you, if you're not paying attention to this guy, that's the problem you're going to have. Now, if you try to de-escalate it and it doesn't work and it does erupt into violence, keep moving. Don't try to just stand your ground in one position and try to fend them all off. Move around as much as possible. Always try to get them in the way of each other. Make them work hard. Don't make it easy for them. And while you're doing that, try to find a way out. Try to find exits. You don't have to be a hero and try to stand and fight your ground. Look, look around the room. And I like to be proactive when I go somewhere new. I try to find where emergency exits are. I look for doors. I look for pathways. I try to take account into obstacles. I check traction on the floor. Just, it's a habit I do, so I'm trying to be aware of my surroundings. And like I said, don't be a hero. Don't think that you're gonna stand your ground and take them all on and be some sort of a badass. This situation is extremely dangerous. And being attacked by more than one person, being attacked by one person is bad enough, but being attacked by multiple is a lot worse than movies make it out to be. Jason Bourne does not exist. And if he does, he hasn't been caught on security camera yet. And here's another variable. You most likely have no idea what level of training they have. Multiple people could be multiple skill levels. Are they all MMA fighters? If you suspect that, my recommendation is to apologize, say whatever you think they want to hear, offer them to buy a drink, de-escalate as much as you can because you're not going to be taking them all on. Now, I do advocate trying to escape a situation. I think the best defense is not having the fight to begin with, especially in a situation with multiple people. Others say that the last thing that you want to do is run because it exposes your back and it increases the likelihood that they're just going to chase you. This is very possible and honestly, it comes down to you have to judge the situation. I think your goal is to try to find a way out while mitigating as much risk as possible. Another variable, weapons. You likely don't know what they have on them. They don't know what you have on you. Also, you have your environment. There could be a lot of things at your disposal that you could use, especially if you're in a restaurant or a bar. Lots of objects you can use on them, but they can also use them on you too. So keep that in the back of your mind. Weapons is a very important variable that a lot of people don't take into consideration when facing multiple attackers. It's easy to get distracted by the number of people and not always paying attention to individual attributes. So while you're using your environment, I mean, use tables, use chairs, use objects as barriers to work around. Try to work your way out. Keep them at an obstacle. Don't let them surround you. But also try to make sure that you don't work yourself in a position where you get caught in the corner. That's the last place you want to be because that's actually even worse than being stuck in the middle of them. You really have nowhere to go then. And if at all possible, use them as barriers. You know, if you're gonna do a takedown, if you happen to grab one, you know, put them in the way of the other one. It's in our, in our jiu-jitsu school, um, it, it's hard to train against multiple attackers. It's not something you can pre-choreograph because it's never ever gonna play out any way you practice. 
but at least at our school, we do practice concepts and our Sheehan is very, very adamant about us being aware of everything going on around us. So whenever we do any one of our throws, any one of our takedowns, we get called out if we don't immediately look and scan around us to make sure there's no one behind us. And even throws can be adjusted at the mindset of, okay, well you want to throw a person, well you can throw them this way, you can direct them that way or that way, trying to put them in a position where the next person's going to stumble over them or create an obstacle. So there's a lot of awareness you need to have your environments. And if you're going to have to fight in this situation, do whatever you can, M make it as hard as possible for them. Even if that includes using themselves as their own obstacles. Also understand this is going to be a dynamic and fluid group. They're not just going to stay in a position and take a number of when to attack you. And they're certainly not going to just line up and attack you one at a time, at least not very likely. Although I say that, and there was a YouTube clip I saw years back that had a guy defending himself against multiple attackers. It looked like some sort of road rage incident, not really sure. They're all wearing like nice work clothes and they're out in the street, but for some reason the attackers were lining up and they were attacking one at a time and he was taken down one at a time, but there was no technique. It was incredibly sloppy. And to be honest, it really looked like it needed circus music with it. But that being said, just understand that this is not like the movies where they take turns attacking. You don't know the pattern. You don't know how they're going to react. They're all a threat at all times. Do not expect it to happen like a movie. It's not going to be clean and beautiful. You're not going to pull off some beautiful combination. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be roughed up. And if you can get out of the situation, you're going to feel it. Just keep in mind when you see a fight scene in a movie like that, it's meant to be entertaining and it's fun to see a hero take out a bunch of bad guys, but that's not the way it happens in real life. Now, even one of my favorite martial arts movies, The Perfect Weapon, it has a scene where Jeff Speakman is walking home and he's actually surrounded by a couple of guys who mug him. And in a split second like that and a few beautiful moves, all, all the guys are dropped. And I'll agree with Kevin who asked this question. He said he saw this scene and he's like, he's like oh, that's beautiful. I want to learn Kempo. Okay, I, I, I'm the same way. I saw that. I was like, wow, it was so impressive. But when you really stop to think about it, well, one, they had weapons. And two, he was in the worst place possible. He was right in the center of all of them. And they just kind of stood there. That's not the way it would really normally happen, likely in real life, but it, it is a movie. Movies are meant to be entertaining and it achieved its, it achieved its goal. We all went, oh, wow, that was cool and signed up for Kempo. I also want to bring up another scene from Jack Reacher 2. I thought it was a fun movie and there's a scene that's my personal favorite and it was a scene in which he was in the bar and of course you know a guy picks a fight with him and they go out into the parking lot and he's surrounded by five guys and basically you know he's Tom Cruise is a total badass and he takes them all on. Now the reason I'm bringing up this particular scene is because it touches on another aspect the psychology of the situation. And I thought the scene was rather fun by the way they handled it. So basically in short Tom Cruise is brought out to the parking lot by these five guys and they're like, are you ready for this? And Tom Cruise is like, okay, well, this is your last chance to walk away. And the leader's like, how do you figure that? It's five against one. And Jack Reacher goes, well, actually it's three against one. And the guy's like, well, how, how do you work that math out? And he's like, well, first, when I take out the leader, which will be you, then there'll be about two guys left bold enough to do the attack. And after I take them out, the last two guys always run. It's a total cocky scene. It was really fun in the moment, but it brings back, circles back around the topic of you, you can't assume the psychology of the group. So let's touch on this first point. Let's take out the leader. You hear this a lot. Oh, you take out the leader. You take out the big guy. The fight's going to be over. The others, the others will quit. Eh, maybe. But also be prepared for that to not work. One is, let's assume you can take out the leader and not be beaten up by the other guys behind you. Two, there might not always be a leader. Sometimes groups are just groups. And also, who says the leader or the one with the mouth is the best fighter? Or maybe he's not the one who's got the weapon. That's a psychology you can't assume. It might work, but it probably won't. I mean, you still got multiple people to attend with. And also understand the group mentality. Look for signs. You know, they're gonna be communicating with each other in subtle ways. If, if you think that the tensions are rising and the guy talking to you, the person talking to you starts getting real fidgety, starts moving around, it starts getting jumpy, or he starts to turn away, but his feet are pointed at you. Uh, he, he's, he's prepping, he's getting ready. Also watch their hands. Look for them to exchange glances at each other. That might be them looking for signs to make a move. You really have to pay attention to the group and the psychology of the group and you can never assume what they're thinking. So like I said, that was a really fun scene and one of my favorite scenes of that, that Jack Reacher movie. But even though he did the whole little badass play out analysis, it still didn't quite play out exactly how he thought it would. So just remember that you can't, you're not gonna be able to predict or call the shots. You're gonna have to ride the situation as it happens. Talking about the group tactics, yes, they're not all going to stand there and take turns and attack one at a time. But I also saw some arguments before, which had, I think had a little bit of merit to it. 
And the concept of, if you've got eight guys attacking you, you're not gonna have eight punches thrown in unison at the exact same time. Yeah, that, that's probably true. But he kind of, this, this, this instructional video took it a little too far in thinking that, okay, well only these four guys on these angles, these are the only angles of entry, so when it comes this way, you gotta step this way, you, you can't arrange it like that, you can't predict that. That's, that's too unpredictable of a situation. I like the concept of that, okay, thinking that, okay, you gotta be practical about who can attack at what time, but again, they're not gonna take turns, you can't choreograph it, and I still think the best thing to do is position yourself and try to make it as hard for them as possible. And guys, and I really hate that I have to bring this up, but I've actually had people say this to me. I had someone tell me years, years back, like, oh, multiple people aren't a problem. I'll just duck and they'll punch each other and knock each other out. I looked at him waiting for him to chuckle and realized he wasn't joking. You're not gonna duck and have them knock each other out. This is not a cartoon. You're not gonna be able to grab this guy's knife, swing and redirect it and cut that guy. It doesn't work that way. Don't ever practice that way. These are real dangerous situations. Don't assume that these guys are bumping into this and they're gonna hurt each other. They're after you. You gotta protect yourself, position, evade as much as possible, and get out of there. Grappling. I'm sorry all you BJJ guys out there. Avoid the ground. When, and, and in any real street fight, the ground is the last place you wanna be tenfold for multiple attackers. Once you're down there, you're most likely not gonna get back up. Uh, it's hard enough to grapple one person, even if you're really good, you can't grapple five. And I do sometimes hear Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys be like, oh, I hate that they, you know, they, they fight that, that, that criticism that, oh, people always say we can't grapple multiple people. Then I wanna seriously ask, if you are a grappler and you hate the criticism that you can't grapple more than one person on the ground, please, I'm genuinely asking, what are the tactics for it? I haven't seen anything. What do you guys suggest if you do get stuck on the ground and there's multiple people? What is your best tactic? Because I, I think that would be worth exploring. So honestly, I think the best way to defend yourself against multiple attackers is to be very proactive and try to prevent the situation from arising. Easier said than done, but if you can learn to recognize the signs and sometimes if you feel tensions rising, if you can remove yourself, you can pacify things a little bit, that you always wanna take that road as opposed to having to fight multiple people. Now as to the question, what is the best art to learn or the best way to train to fight multiple attackers? Well, there's a couple options. Now, there are things you can get. You know, there are weapons you can buy and carry on you and protect yourself with, and there are good self-defense tools, but they have risks too. And also keep in mind too that when you introduce something like that, you are automatically escalating the situation. That's another topic for another time, but something you do need to understand. So what is the best art for multiple attackers? I don't think there is a best art, but it's a best mindset. You wanna find a school that teaches you awareness, environmental awareness, and concepts of multiple attackers. And I don't mean pre-choreographed moves or sequences that you have to m memorize and break out on the spot because it's gonna play out exactly A, B, C, D, E. It doesn't work that way. Don't look for that, but look for schools that teach you how to move and how to create openings. And avoid any school that says they've got a guaranteed technique. Oh, guaranteed, they'll save you on the street. That's a, that's a sales gimmick. Nothing is guaranteed. But there's a lot of schools that will teach concepts like that. For example, Kempo, which gets a lot of criticism for you know, preconceived, pre-choreographed techniques, but when you really break those techniques down, there's concepts and there's principles and there's ideas that you're supposed to take and adapt and use them in situations. So I do like that that awareness is taught in there. And like I said, some jujitsu schools, like the one I go to, we're always, always, always reinforcing the fact of that whenever you're doing a throw, you're tied up with the person, you have to be looking over your shoulder, you have to be aware of who's over there, and then try to use them as obstacles against each other. Boxing and MMA schools. I'm always gonna recommend them for self-defense because they're a great way to learn speed, footwork, fighting skills, especially if you have to learn in a you know, short amount of time. But please keep in mind, they are focused on one-on-one -on -one fights. Boxers don't train for multiple people. Yes, they could probably adapt to it, but if your interest isn't to you know, defend yourself against multiple people, boxing and MMA are good, but I would find some sort of a tactical school that could teach you that awareness to go along with it. And we've brought this up many times too. Best way to learn? Spar. You know, we talk about pressure testing techniques, right? You know, learning how to spar, actually making sure stuff really works on a resistant opponent. I think the same thing goes for this. If you wanna learn how to practice, or if you wanna learn how to defend against multiple attackers, spar multiple people at once. You'll see real fast how hard it really is. And I promise you right now, it's not easy. You, it's, you know, these aren't guys you know, where you're gonna hit once they're gonna drop to the ground. They're trying to knock you out and you have two or three of them trying to do it, you have a fight in your hands. 
Now we did this years back at our old school. Um, we would do multiple attackers or multiple sparring sessions and it was really fun. And even though we didn't take it super, super seriously, it was an interesting practice to put yourself through a different mindset because it's a lot harder to pay attention to two people, let alone three or four. So I do recommend doing that. But I also promise you this too, of all the times it sparred multiple people, never once that they hit each other and knock each other out because I moved out of the way. That's just not realistic. But sparring, I was sparring and pressure testing. That's the only way you're gonna get a feel of how to handle yourself in a situation like that. So that's today's topic and discussion on defense against multiple attackers. I wanna thank Kevin for such a great question. I think this is really worth talking and even getting into, into greater detail at a later level, but the discussion has to start somewhere. A lot of great ideas to, to, to think about and chew on. Also, if we have any viewers out there with experience in multiple attackers or teaching tactics for such, please put it in the comments below. I would love to hear your feedback. And we also like to practice something here called subscriptional awareness, which means please subscribe down below and click on that bell icon so you become aware when the next episode drops. And also please join us on our Patreon family. We've got a lot of great exclusive content and we're always adding all the time. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, we've done a bunch of other awareness videos, including environmental awareness, which goes into much greater detail of just how to avoid situations like that. So please be sure to go check that out. Thank you everyone and we'll see you next week.